For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is DA's Gauteng Shadow MEC for Health, Jack Bloom, to discuss the recent health ombuds report into allegations against Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital and health-related matters in the province. The health ombudsman, uh, Professor Malekhapuru Mahoba, uh, painted a very bad picture yesterday when he released that uh, report uh, of the Rahima Mosa Hospital. So Mr. Bloom, as one of the whistleblowers uh, mentioned in the investigative report, can you please share with our viewers what you revealed um, about the former CEO, Dr. Nozogom Kabai? Well, I heard from people at the hospital that she actually spent very little time at the at the hospital itself, that she was always uh, at home uh, doing uh, Zoom meetings, which I thought was very irregular. So I actually asked a question of the Gauteng legislature, and it turned out that, uh, you know, according to the official reply, uh, she was hardly ever at the hospital. And uh, she, according to the reply, actually had been given permission uh, not to be at the hospital and to, to work from home, which I found very suspicious. Uh, in fact, what the health ombudsman found is that uh, she didn't really have permission uh, that she claimed to have and that there were uh, nearly a hundred unaccounted for days that she just simply couldn't account for whether she worked or not. So, I mean, here you have an absentee CEO. When she did take action, it was against the whistleblower, uh, Dr. Tim DeMaia, who was trying to reveal what was happening at the hospital. So I said at the time, it's not him who should have been suspended. Uh, the CEO should have been suspended. Uh, anyway, I, I think it's a, a very good report. It uh, outlines all the terrible management failures at that hospital. But I think it's good as well because it points to the, the wider problems at the Gauteng Health Department. Uh, according to the health ombudsman, he said it's a mess. And it, it is a mess. And he says the standards for, for appointing uh, CEOs of hospital in general have declined. And that's one of the reasons why... Uh, uh, the CEO was appointed to that particular hospital. She, of course, should never have been appointed in the first place. And I'm very pleased that he's laid down that there needs to be a new CEO appointed in three months, according to the highest standards. And I would think that that should apply to other hospitals as well. Mm. And why would uh, the Department of Health in our province, Gauteng, lower the standards? Do, do we have any reasons to do that? Well, I suspect it's just a cater deployment, quite frankly. Uh, it was who you who you know, not what you know. And there were red flags about the, the CEO of this hospital. She didn't disclose that she had a chronic mental illness. Uh, they didn't even look at the results of the competency tests and what uh, the referees that they'd contacted had said had said about her. So, if, you know, she should really not have been appointed. And... Uh, I can only think that, uh, you know, she knew people in high places and that's why she was appointed to a very senior and responsible position. And the result of that is that patients suffered. Uh, the report confirms that pregnant women were sleeping on, on floors and the words that, that they use about the hospital, filthy, dirty, mm -hmm. unsafe, sewerage. I mean, it is just unbelievable that uh, this could carry on. And, of course, I think if you don't have a decent CEO, this is what happens. Mm. And are you hopeful now that a uh, Gauteng MEC, uh, Norman Tu and Gomorale Hoko, will implement the recommendations uh, that, were, that were made in the report since uh, she said herself that uh, national health is playing an oversight role? Well, I hope they do, you know, but we've had uh, reports like the Life of Sedimani report, which Professor Mahoba uh, has said is one of those reports that's not been fully implemented by the Gauteng Health Department. Uh, but the DA will do our best to, to monitor the implementation of recommendations of this report. Uh, we certainly want to see a, a decent uh, uh, CEO appointed there. We want to see the infrastructure uh, improvements made at the hospital, and uh, we would like to see the department as a whole uh, be fixed up. But I think that, that, quite frankly, I think is a political question. I, I personally believe that it won't change until there's a change in political control. There's too many people at the Gauteng head office who shouldn't be there as well. You know, I, I don't think they have the competency and they're protecting corruption networks. You only have to see the Tempisa Hospital uh, corruption, one billion rand, according to the SIU report that uh, that was misspent. And who was protecting them? 
so I think there's a corruption racket in every hospital. The rot is is far more extensive than just Rasheema Musa Hospital. And, you know, I don't think the political world is there to deal with all these problems in the Gauteng Health Department. You recently welcomed the 784 million rand that is injected towards helping a cancer patient. In your opinion, what is the state of oncology treatment in Gauteng? It's terrible. There's there's huge waiting lists, about 3,000 people waiting for surgery. You know, this is a life and death issue. If you don't get surgery or chemotherapy in good time, you could die. And just think of the the anxiety of the patients and, of, and the extra suffering. Uh, there's 1,000 men waiting for prostate operations. There's 500 women waiting for breast cancer treatment. Uh, I mean, these are large numbers, and it was terribly exacerbated by the fire at the Chardonnay Kedja Johannesburg Hospital. So, you know, I, I think that there was engagement with civil society groups, Section 27 and the Cancer Alliance, and I think that's been successful. And they've gone for the only sensible route to to drastically cut down the, the backlogs in the, in the short term, and that's a private-public uh, cooperation. So there will be outsourcing radiation treatment, and I hope the money is spent properly. It's a lot of money, you know, but uh, the question is implementation. Will they spend it? properly and, and benefit the most number of people. But it's an encouraging sign because I think there needs to be more cooperation with the private sector in future. So that also confirms the importance of uh, Section 27 is one of the advocates groups that oversee if people are suffering down on the streets. What would you say about that? Well, I think uh, civil society has been immensely important. Human Rights Commission, Cancer Alliance, Section 27, and journalists. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for journalists, uh, we wouldn't know anything about the Tembisa hospital corruption. She was murdered. And it turns out that she had alerted the chief financial officer about what was going on there. She was told falsely that there was an investigation into it. and It was all covered up. So I think this is the problem in general. Everything is covered up. And if it wasn't for... Uh, independent people in society blowing the whistle or doing extra diligent work, uh, then we'd be in a far worse situation. And your recent tweet, Mr. Bloom, revealed that some public hospitals and clinics, uh, they ran out of diesel, while some have no valid fire clearance certificates, despite what we've just witnessed at Charlotte McGregor Hospital. Well, it turns out that only two of the 37 hospitals have a valid fire clearance certificate. I mean, that's absolutely shocking. Um, and uh, the, the fact that we, we've had serious fires and they can't fix uh, uh, an important matter like that uh, speaks volumes about the, the the incompetence of the Gauteng Health Department. And then to run out of diesel. How do you run out of diesel? I mean, that's incomprehensible. And in fact, it turns out that there's a large number of clinics in the Chwani area and the West Rand area who, who, who didn't even have diesel. And, and I don't even think they've got generators. I mean, you know, people focus on the hospitals, but we've got a very large number of clinics and it's very serious if people go there for, you know, for primary health care and, and they can't be treated and they have to come back and transport money is expensive, the inconvenience, the crowds get longer. You know, this, this department is not focusing on essentials and I think the problem starts at the very top. And lastly, uh, Mr. Bloom, Professor Malekhapuru also uh, said that there is a study that was done which revealed that uh, 40% of the patients at uh, the Rahima Musa Hospital, I'm sure in other hospitals as well, were not South African. Do you think that those patients in particular, they, they are always afraid of complaining? Is that the reason why the state of their hospital was, the, was in that state? No, I think that's uh, that's a different issue. I think uh, the the reason it's in a poor state is because the Gauteng Health Department just appoints uh, poorly qualified people and they don't listen to good people like Tim DeMeyer. And that's the, the root problem in our Gauteng Health Department. And until they fix that, we're going to continue to have scandals. You know, there's probably been a, a major scandal once or twice a year for the last few years. And despite uh, promises like... Uh, former Premier David Makura, he said seven years ago that uh, there would be an urgent turnaround of the Gauteng Health Department. Well, what, what do we have now? Just more scandal. And it just, uh, whatever we, the more we learn, the more horrified we are. That was DA's Shadow MEC for Health, Jack Bloom, discussing the Health Ombuds report 
and health-related matters in the province.